Um, my name is Dean, and I am uh, the assistant pastor for students and families. Uh, we're going to be in the book of John this afternoon. So in the Pew Bible, it's page 904. We're going to be in John chapter 18, verses 28 through 38. So if you would turn there, and as you are, let me give you a little context of where we are in the life of Jesus. So we are obviously in Holy Week, and so Jesus Christ has been betrayed by Judas. He has been arrested by a group of soldiers and religious leaders. And now, as we, as we walk into this text, as we approach this text, he's being brought before Caiaphas, the high priest. And the high priest is questioning Jesus on what is it you're teaching? And then we have another of his disciples, Peter, Peter, who actually denies that he even knows who Jesus is, and he does it three times. So that's the context of where we are as we come to chapter 18 and verses 28 through 38. So let me pray real quick, and then we will read those verses together. Heavenly Father, as we open your word, we pray that you would give us ears to hear and a mind to understand. We pray, Lord, that you would speak to us now as we, your servants, are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. This is John 18, verses 28 through 38. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not doing evil, we would have not delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, it's not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you say this of your own accord or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from this world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, what is truth? After he said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I'm often fascinated by... Uh, people who have the expert ability to tell if a person is lying, if they're actually being, if they're actually trying to deceive someone. If you, uh, if you read up on this kind of stuff, you can look at people's body language, you can listen to speech patterns, and you can look at, you can look at their, um, their facial expressions, and experts in that field can tell if a person is actually telling them the truth. And I looked up one CIA expert who, who actually spoke on this, and she actually said that the average person, meaning like you and me, we lie on average 10 times a day. Now, to some of you, that may be a surprise, but she's talking about all those questions like, how are you feeling? The answer to that question. Those little bitty white lies all the way to something bigger where we're actually trying to hide something. And the question is, is why do we do that? Why do we lie? Why do we try to deceive other people? And the reality of that is we do that because we're trying to create our own version of the truth to serve our own purpose. That's what's happening in this text. The people who have come after Jesus have come with one goal in mind, and that goal is to eliminate him. It is, it is to kill him. And they are going to create their own version of the truth so that they can get to that end. 
And so as we talk about truth, if you are a Christian, if you are one that, has, that says, I trust Christ by faith, then for you and me, the standard of what is true is already decided. It is the word of God. It is the Bible. It is the 66 books of the Old Testament and New Testament together. It is, as Timothy says, it is those words that are breathed out by God. Those are the words that are the authority, the truth, the standard of truth that we have in our lives. And so if you and I are going to actually call ourselves followers of Christ, when we listened to Joe yesterday and he said we are to take up our cross and follow Christ, part of doing that is realizing we have a standard of truth and we need to align our lives with that standard of truth, the word of God. And we do that in three ways. We leave what is false, we determine what's true, and we commit ourselves to the one who is the king of all truth. So that first, that first one, we leave what is false. If you look back at those verses we just read in verses 28 through 30, <clears throat> excuse me, you're going to see a lot of false things going on in that text. In Matthew 26, 59, you have these same Jewish leaders, and they are saying, here's what we want to do. We want to get some false testimony. We need false testimony to create some false accusations so that we can kill Jesus. That's one of the false things that's happening in this text. They have these very false intentions of getting to Jesus, accusing him falsely, false testimony to get him killed. But there's something else in this text that's happening that's also false. If you remember when we read the text, the Jews are coming to Rome's, the governor's headquarters, Pilate's headquarters. They're coming to that headquarters, but they stop and they don't go inside. They stop outside, and the reason they do that is because for a Jew to go into a Gentile building that had a roof on it, it made them ceremonially unclean. So they could not participate in the Passover. So on one hand, you have this, this group of Jewish religious leaders who are creating false accusations, false testimony in order to charge Jesus in order to kill him. But on the other hand, they're very concerned that they won't be able to participate in their religious ceremonies and their religious practice. Friends, that is a false religion. That is a false religion. They wanted to look religious on the outside, but have their way with Jesus and kill him. That was their goal. But then there's something more, and it, and it just continues to reveal the wickedness of their hearts. As they come before Pilate, Pilate comes out to them and starts asking them a very reasonable question. He said, what charges are you bringing against this man? What legal charges are you going to bring against this man? And they don't answer his question. They just make a statement. If this man were not doing evil, we would not have brought him to you. And so Pilate looks at this group who really hasn't answered his question, and he says, so take him and judge him by your own law. And then the second part of their answer reveals their heart. They say, it is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. Their whole purpose is to kill Jesus. Their whole motive is to just get the authority from the Roman government so they can execute Jesus. They have false testimony, false accusations, a false religion, and false motives. If you and I are going to seek to live according to the word of God, if we are going to seek to align ourselves with that standard of truth, you and I have to leave what is false. In Matthew chapters 5 through 7, Jesus preaches his famous Sermon on the Mount. And in verse 27, he says, do not commit adultery. So that's the law. You don't commit adultery. But then he goes further and he says, but if a man looks with lustful intent upon a woman, he has already committed adultery with her 
in his heart. You see, if you and I are going to live according to the word of God, we have to be more concerned about our hearts than we are about our religious practice. We have to be more concerned about the wickedness of our hearts than our religious ceremonies. Ultimately, there was nothing, there was no religious practice, no religious ceremony that these Jewish leaders could do that would remove the wickedness from their hearts. The only one who could remove the wickedness and the sinfulness from our hearts is God alone. And he did that by sending his son. He sent his son to this earth to die on the cross for our sin. That's exactly what we're celebrating this week. He sent his son to take on sin. Him who knew no sin became sin that you and I would receive the righteousness of Christ when we trust in him by faith. That's the truth. Romans 5, 19 says it really well. For as, for as by the one man's disobedience, that's Adam, the many were made sinners. So by the one man's obedience, that's Jesus, the many will be made righteous. If we are going to seek to live according to the word of God, align ourselves with his word, we need to leave what is false, but we also have to determine we have to seek actively to determine what is true. And through this text, through 32, through the rest of the chapter, you see Pilate trying to determine in this moment what is true. Why have you brought Jesus before me? Why is this man standing before me? What charges do you bring against this man? And now he begins to take Jesus into the headquarters with him. So you're going to see two parts of truth in this, in this next point, which is you're going to see the words of Jesus and you're going to see the actions of Jesus. As we seek to determine what is true, you're going to see Pilate going into his headquarters and out to the Jews, into his headquarters and out to the Jews, all in this effort to determine what is the truth. Where, where does the truth lie? And so he asked, Pilate asked the question to Jesus. He says, are you the king of the Jews? What have you done? What have you done that your own people would bring you to me? And the amazing thing is, is when you look at verse 32, you can see the reason. It's there in the text. The reason for everything that's happening at that time, the reason for everything that's happening this week is verse 32. Everything was happening to fulfill the words of Jesus that he would die the death, the kind of death that he had said, that he had told his disciples he would die. He is telling them, he is fulfilling the words of Scripture. He is fulfilling what he said he would do, that he came to die and how he would die on a cross, he's fulfilling those words as well. When you and I are, are stuck with a problem, when you and I have, have something going on in our lives, the first place we have to look are to the words of, of the Lord. We've got to look to the Bible. Because it is there where we see not our own opinion, not other people's opinion, not our own interpretation, but the very word of God. But the other thing that's in this text that's really amazing is he doesn't, just say something that's true, that he's fulfilling, he also does something in his actions. When Pilate calls him in to the headquarters, Jesus walks into that building, that building, that Gentile building that has a roof over it, that Gentile building that none of the other Jews would walk in because they were afraid it would make them unclean and they wouldn't be able to participate in Passover. But what you see is you see Jesus walk in. This Jewish man walks in to the headquarters because what he knows is this. In order for me to remain pure, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that I walk in here. What matters, what makes me impure is what's in my heart. It is the sinfulness and the wickedness of my heart that makes me impure. And he taught that in Matthew 15. 
when he said, it's not what goes into the mouth that makes me unclean, but it's what proceeds from the heart. The wickedness of our hearts is what makes us unclean. So the question that he asks, what have you done? Pilate's main concern is, is this man a threat to Rome? And we see in Jesus' answer that he is no threat at all. We see this in the next point because what we, what we have determined is we have determined what is true. It's the word of God. And we see that truth on display in Jesus Christ. But after we have actively sought to determine what is true, now we've got to commit ourselves to the one who is the source of all truth, the one who is the king of all truth. And when Jesus responds to that question of are you a king, he says, he says these words, my kingdom is not of this world, but from another place. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight to keep me from being handed over to you. In that answer, Jesus says, I'm not a threat to the king of, to, to the king of Rome. I'm not a threat to the Roman kingdom. R.C. Sproul, who's a theologian, says it this way, Jesus did not say that his dominion and authority did not include this world, but he told Pilate, my kingdom is not like your kingdom built on violence and war. Jesus had no intention on leading a rebellion against the Roman government. His kingdom, as we see in Daniel 7.14, is one that will be everlasting, is one that will not pass away, and is one that shall not be destroyed. Because he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. That's who we are committing ourselves to. But he is also the source of, of all truth. And we see this in John 14, 6, when Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to me except through the Father. This is what Jesus says about himself. He is the explanation of who God is. He is the truth about who God is and why he came. And so this discussion of truth, this, dis this discussion that Pilate has between, between Jesus and the crowd, learning what the crowd says, learning what his own interpretation is, and then hearing what Jesus said, that is our struggle. You and I can choose to believe what other people are saying, what other opinions people have. We can choose to believe our own interpretation or if you're a Christian, if you're trusting in Christ, we must believe in the truth of the scriptures. And we must remember that Jesus Christ is the truth. He is the source of all truth. And in this one moment, this time with Pilate and Jesus is not over, but in this one moment, Pilate says, I find no fault in him. I find him innocent. So my question for you today is what about you? Is Jesus Christ the ruler over your heart? Is he the king over your heart? Does he have authority over what you consider to be true? In other words, when things come into your mind, do you have a filter of biblical thinking that happens first with the word of God? Or do the, other, do the opinions of others, books, social media, people in your lives have that authority in your life? And the last question is, have you submitted yourself to this king of kings and this king of truth by saying, I need you. I know I'm a sinner. I want your forgiveness. Please take your place on the throne of my heart. Because that is the truth that leads to eternal life. Let me pray. Almighty God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your words do lead to eternal life. God, would you give us the strength and the wisdom to know your truth, to seek your truth, 
and to be committed to you and to you alone. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen.